everyone Bill Luffin here GA the Gospel on my page on Facebook okay I hope you all like it so far and keep liking following and everything's much appreciated as I said I'm going to be going around interviewing inter-county hurlers and today I'm down here in lovely Dungarvan County Waterford and I'm here with Patrick Curran. Patrick how are you going? How are you going? Nice to meet you Bill. Um, so Patrick just talking briefly about it here we're actually now inside Dungarvan CBS um, where you went to secondary school, you had a lot of good days here. You won um, rice cup, as you told me. You won Har or you won Harties. You won the white cup under 15 as well, and you won the promoted um, Crow Cup in 2013. Just briefly, um, tell me what were those days and occasions like for you here yourself? I suppose they were brilliant, you know, and they were we had great days inside here, and great crack was was the thing inside in this school, I suppose, and um, I think we we learnt a lot as well along the way, and that was brilliant, and I suppose we did it with with great friends, which was which was the main thing, you know. Yeah, say, going back, you won your first ever Harty title here um, as an amalgamation with um, St Augustine's, another school here in Dungarvan. Um, you were known then as Colossian Adesha, or the second time out, Dungarvan Colleges. You won back-to-back -back Harty titles in 2012 and 2013. Going back to 2012, I suppose, the, um, the quarter final of the Harty, you beat the St Flannan's team. Can you tell us about that, that occasion? Yeah, I suppose, um, I suppose going into games we were real um, probably underdogs going into it and teams didn't really know a lot about us which which was great you know and um, that Flannan's team had a, a lot of stars on it Tony Kelly and Shane O'Donnell and Peter Duggan and, and Bobby Duggan so they had a load of fellas and I suppose yeah. we, we weren't really given a chance and we, we proved that day that, that we could compete with them and it really gave us the confidence to push on and, and win that hearty and and you know, and when when the hard hard to the year after as well, so which was brilliant. Just briefly going back to say you were in first year and you won the race cup. Did you know then you had something special coming through? You won it as um, Dungarvan CBS without the amalgamation mm. in first year, yeah? Yeah. So, Dean, when you're kind of looking going forward, right, we have another school coming on board with us. We're now playing as Clash and Adeshka, um, Dungarvan Colleges. That really must have given you that lift that, yeah, we could go on here. And as you said, you bet Flannan's there in 2012. You went on to lift the Harty title. You beat Nina CBS in, the, in that um, final. Then you went into an all Ireland quarter final. You were unluckily defeated by um, by Kilkenny CBS. And that Nina team that you bet went on to lift the Croke Cup title. Um, going into 2013 then, you must have been saying to yourself, if we can get back there, if we can win the Harty lads, we have to justify ourselves. We have the talent, we have the players. Can we go on and lift the, um, the Crow Cup as such? Yeah, definitely, you know, and I suppose the first year was kind of the main focus was win the Harty and win the Harty, that was the focus. And I suppose the year after then, we said if we could get that far and do it, we'd go on, try and go on and win the All-Ireland, you know, and thankfully we did and it was absolutely brilliant, you know, and we, we won't forget any of the days we had and the crack we had along the way either, so. I, I suppose looking at that success, um, you had an outstanding team. There's names there that I, I, I still remember: um, Dara Lyons, Tom Devine, Ty De Burka, Colin Dunford. Do you know it was really an outstanding group that just came together? Um, say with, with your own club, did you always have that kind of group coming through together? Um, did the school here play a part in your underage success, toughening you up physically and everything, and giving you the exposure against other top intercounty players from other? Yeah, I suppose playing with my own club, we were lucky. We were successful from under 12 up, and uh, I suppose that, that, that really kind of stood to us, you know. But um, I suppose, uh, no, when, when we came into the school, it was it was brilliant, you know, and, and we kind of had that. It was never really about it, any individual or anything like that. It was just just a group that came together, and, you know, we, we really had to crack, and just kind of, there was no no pressure going into games or anything like that. And it was it was a time when we probably re really enjoyed our hurling, you know, and didn't really fear anyone, or we just gave it a go, you know. I suppose it's great to be young and um, kind of adventurous as such. You can see there, Derek or um, Patrick gave me a smile there, saved by the bell. Um, <laughs> so, Patrick, you then, after winning 2013, you won the Harty, the Crow Cup, the Harty for the second time. Um, it was um, only Waterford's um, fifth time ever winning the Harty. Mount Sain won it back in 1953, I believe. Then De La Salle in 2007 and 8, and yourself still in the 13 um, and 2012. Um, you went on then to play, you were an under 17 playing your first year minor with Watford, and um, your first day out, um, you were beaten by Tipperary, and um, you recovered from it. You got to the Munster final, and you were narrowly beaten by Limerick after a, re after a replay. How did you have that inner belief to go on then and really just push on and win the All Ireland from there? You still had some outstanding players, but like, after getting them knocks, you did Harty really and that exposure mentally toughen you up that you could go on and believe that you could go on and achieve? 
Oh, definitely. I suppose it, mentally it did toughen us up and physically as well with the conditions and everything. But I suppose we just kind of, it was kind of that winning feeling, I suppose. Uh, winning, winning was a kind of a habit and it was something we didn't want to lose, you know. And um, definitely that the experience in Harty and experience of playing minor in front of big crowds and that stood to us. And hopefully it will go on, going forward too, yeah. And then after winning, you beat Galway in the All-Ireland Final and you beat Kilkenny that day as well in the semi-final. Um, you then went on last year, 2016, and you won the county's um, second ever um, under-21 title. I think Paul Flynn was there in 92 with another few names that, to me, are legends of Waterford for Hurling. Um, just briefly talk, um, talk to us about um, last year's success. Did win in 2013, you were on the edge most of the lads last year. Did you really just say to yourself, lads, we can't leave this behind, you know, we have a golden generation of players here, this is our opportunity, this is our time? Uh, I suppose we, we, we kind of, at the start of the year, we kind of just said it was a focus to kind of go and, and, and do it, but there was no real pressure and the, the crack was good as well, so yeah. I suppose we needed that with any team and we, we had talent throughout the panel as well, which was great and things went well for us fr from the off and just kind of went on from there, yeah. I suppose, going off from the outset, Limerick, after winning the All-Ireland title under 21, down to 15, they had 9, 10, 11 names that were still underage um, the following year. And after beating ye, um, I suppose, in 2013 minor, you really kind of, were they the, the kind of the standard, the bar yeah, they were, setters, yeah. yeah? So, going into that campaign, what was the mood in camp like? Do we have to beat Limerick to want to win this title? Or you really, it was kind of Tipperary as such that pushed you kind of, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, I suppose we, we actually, a lot of us played in four minor monster finals and, and didn't win any, so, and they were all, all against Limerick, so I suppose that kind of, I suppose, drove us on, you know, and even though, even though we lost, we kind of, you know, you, you didn't want to put two bad games together, and, you know, it was kind of a sign of, if we bounced back, you know, it was a sign of a good team and a sign of a good player, so that's what we kind of looked at, and thankfully we learned from them defeats, you know. Yeah, and um, so you've won Harties, you've won underage success with Warford minor and under 21. What's the feeling camp for 2017? You were, I was there last year against um, Kilkenny. Yeah, absolutely, there were fantastic occasions. What's that extra inch or um, extra yard that you can bring to your game for the new campaign that will hopefully at least get you to September and maybe a fire as well um, to the ultimate? Yeah, I suppose we, we just have to go back to what went well for us and um, I suppose we have to get build a good group, group team, a team group, you know, and the crack has to be there and everything, but we have to, we're not looking at any Munster final or Lauren final or anything like that. Our first game is against Cork and that's all we're focusing on really, like, you know, and that, to be our best for that day, that's all, you know. Yeah, you were saying Cork there, are you, are, do you not think tip, no? Uh, he's smirking here now, he's only laughing, look, we leave him off, but um, look, Patrick, thanks for your time. I really much appreciate it now and for being my first um, personal interview, it's really appreciated that you had the faith to give me your time, okay? Um, Patrick's actually up in UCD at the moment, so it was kind of DCU, tough. Yeah. Or DCU, sorry. I'm making the mistakes <laughs> now. So um, he's up in DCU and he's studying, what are you studying, Patrick? Primary teaching, yeah. Primary teaching, okay. So um, he's at the moment getting ready to study for exams and everything and his assignments, so I really do appreciate his time. And look, Waterford Hurling, for me, Waterford Hurling started in 2003, 2004. I can remember them John Milan goals, that Paul Flynn, or Paul Flynn cracker from 20, 30 yards out to free. And they were just fantastic occasions. And I'd love to see it down the line, um, Cork and um, Waterford having days like that again. Um, so Bill O'Flynn here, um, Jay the Gospel, I really do appreciate all your support. Um, I'd like to thank Patrick for um, no taking out some of your time. Okay, Thanks grand. for the interview, it's much appreciated. No okay. And I'd like to thank my um, cameraman, he's my own father here. So Liam O'Flynn, shout out to you, thanks. And Jeremy Sage, well done, lads. Jeremy Sage for your, um, your insight to the future, Mystic Mac. Go on, thank you. Up to the air,